ready everyone welcome to another OBS tutorial on this channel today I got here for you ultimate beginners guide so in case you got your latest version of the OBS successfully downloaded and installed we can go straight for the video okay so welcome to OBS as you can see this big black screen is where all your picture will be that means everything what you want to record or stream will be inside this big black rectangle as you can see at the top left we got the file edit view docs profile scene collection tools and help basically everything else you already know from all kind of other softwares one thing i would like to mention here are docs here you can basically turn on or turn off warriors docs that you are using so in case you don't want to see your scene transition doc you can simply go to docs and uncheck the scene transition and as you can see it actually disappeared and vice versa in case you are missing some of the docs and you don't know how to turn them back you can simply go to docs and check them to actually make them once again visible one of the benefit of the obs studio is that it's fully customizable that means you can simply drag and drop warrior's docs and you can simply change the visual as you want so in case you want to have scene transitions at the left, audio mixer at the right, you can simply move that. In case you want to have scenes and under that you want to have the sources, you can do that. So it's all up to you what you want to do with OBS and how you want it to look for you in the end. As I said already, this big black rectangle is basically what the viewers will see. And now we are going towards the bottom of the OBS. Here, first of all, we can see scenes. There are all of your scenes that you want to use. For example, one scene will be only for your webcam. The other scene will be for your webcam and gameplay and so on and so on, okay? Here at the right, you got sources. Those sources are basically the sources that belongs to the scene that you just have activated, okay? So in my case, I have this scene, but I have no sources here yet. So in case I want to add any source, let's say that I want to add video capture. I can click on this plus, and then I will click on Windows Capture. In this case, I can capture any of those windows, the web browser or anything like that. So for example, I can click on Windows Capture. I will click on Create New because no other is existing yet. I will click on OK. And now I will choose which of the window I want to choose. In my case, I have opened only the OBS and my Chrome. So I want to open my Chrome like this. I will click on OK. As you can see, my Chrome window is just captured at the back. I can also add the display capture, what means I will capture the monitor I want. So for this, once again, click on the plus and then I will go for display capture. And now I will simply add the existing display capture like this. And as you can see, this is actually capturing my monitor one. Behind this, you can see my window capture. So basically you can layer it up how you want, how do you prefer for your stream. In my case, I love to have the display capture at the bottom, then the Windows capture in case anything is captured by the window capture. And then I like to have my game capture because in case I have turned on any game, I want it to be preferred to be showed at the top. In case no game is running, it will simply show the window or display below the source. Okay, but as no game is running in the background, of course, you cannot see any of the game. And the last you can see is the window capture of this web browser. Okay, so let's say that this is our scene one, okay? Here will be the window capture. Let's say I want to add another scene. For this, I will click on plus here below the scenes, like this. And for example, I will call it webcam, okay? Now it's going to be a little bit tricky because I cannot put there my webcam because I'm using my webcam already for this OBS but yeah i will be right back okay so now let's say that i want to put the webcam towards this obs for this i will simply click once again for the plus and then i will click on video capture device like this and as you can see i got here already existing source all existing video capture device this is basically my webcam like this i will click on ok and here i have my video capture device but i got two problems first of all it's not centered towards the screen and the second is that basically it's not activated yet. What will probably will not be case for you because you did not just use your webcam for two different OBS. But in my case, I will first of all right click, then I will click on transform and I will simply click on stretch to screen. Thanks bot, it will actually stretch towards the old screen. As you can see, it's still pitch black. So I will simply right click properties and I will click on deactivate and activate the webcam to actually make it visible like this. Here below this, you can of course choose the resolution of the webcam, the FPS and everything else what you need to set. Okay, in my case, I will click on OK. And this is basically our webcam scene. 
So now we got two scenes. We got the webcam and this web browser where we basically can add the webcam as well. So once again, plus video capture device are existing and video capture device like this, and it's already here. So now basically I can change the size, simply hold any of the corners that you want like this. As you can see, it will keep the ratio so we don't have to worry really much. And now let's say that I want to crop it a little bit. So in case you want to crop your image or webcam or the Windows capture or anything else, you will simply hold Alt while you will drag any of those sides that you want to actually crop, okay? So let's say that I want to crop my microphone from the webcam. For this, I will hold Alt and then I will simply drag this left edge of the webcam. As you can see, it's actually a green line that is showing me that it's actually cropped. So green disrupted line means it's actually cropped. I can do the same from the right side. Once again, Alt and simply drag. Now I will just make it a little bit smaller and I will put it towards the edge of the screen like this, or maybe a little bit bigger like this. And as you can see, we got two scenes, one with my display capture and webcam and one simply with my webcam. So now you can simply switch between them as you want. So I showed you how you can crop, how you can add warrior sources, how you can resize if you want to transform your source. So for example, you want to fit to screen your webcam or you can center it towards the screen. You can simply right click for your webcam or you can also right click here towards the source. So right click and then you will click on transform and you can choose flip horizontal, flip vertical, whether you want to flip them horizontally or vertically, of course, fit to screen, stretch to screen, center to screen, or you can also center it vertically or horizontally how you want. So let's say I want to center it vertically to it be in the middle of the scene. So right click, transform and center vertically like this. And right now we are exactly in the middle of the scene. Now, basically, you can also add warriors filters for your sources. So let's say I have green background and I want to actually glitch it so it will be transparent. For this, I can simply right click on video capture device. I will add filters and there I can simply add effect filters. So plus and I will choose color correction if I want to play with my saturation and all those kind of stuff. OK, so contrast, saturation and many more things. You can set it up here whatever, I will put it back to zero, okay? But you know that you can do those things here. And as I said, in case you have, for example, green background and you want to glitch it, you, you can once again click on plus and then chroma key. Thanks what you can simply glitch whether you got green background, blue background or anything else, okay? And you will set it up here to make it as transparent as possible. In my case, I don't have much of the green background, only this slightly green wall at the back. So as you can see, it's actually acting as it should be a little bit transparent transparent, but it's really not in my case. But in case you got good green screen behind you, you can use this easily. Now, let's say that you want to add some picture towards your stream, some kind of overlay or anything like this. You can go once again to plus and then you can simply add image. We don't have any image in our database, so I will simply create new and I will, for example, put there my thumbnail that I created a few days ago. Okay, so like this we just added the picture. Let's say that this, for example, is some overlay or some cover for your map or some socials, okay? So we can put it like this. Then let's say that we want to put here multiple images that will actually switch between each other. For example, in case you want to present your social pages on your stream or on your video. For this once again, plus, and then you will go for image slideshow like this, create new, and you will set here visibility behavior, slide mode, transitions, whether you want them to fade or slide or swipe or whatever. Then you will choose the time between slides. In my case, I will choose it on 2000 because I want to just show it really quickly. And then transition speed, 700 millisecond might be good, maybe not, 500, whatever. Then in case you want to loop it, you can loop it. In case not, it's up to you. Hide when slideshow is done. You can choose it, depends on how many slides you got and randomize playback whatever it's up to you basically it will just randomize those pictures that you will put in now you got here image files here you can add basically the files that you want to slide in this presentation so i will click on plus add files and now i will choose those two one of them is basically my twitter and the second one is blank page so basically it will sometimes show my x banner and sometimes not so like this i will choose those two i will click on ok and as you can see it actually 
every two seconds shows and disappears from my stream. You can of course choose the bigger interval. You can make it smaller, bigger by your own preferences. Okay. So in the end, you can play with this how you want it to look for your final stream. Okay, so basically now I believe I showed you almost everything what you can add. In case you have some kind of plugins that you are using online, you can go for browser and then you will simply put there your HTTP link, thanks which it will actually load something from the web page, and then you can easily show it on your screen. Or in case I would like to add some color source to my stream to actually make, for example, some kind of border for my webcam or something like this, I can add color source and I will just create new. I will choose color, for example, wide, whatever, and width and high, I will keep it like this, even though I can set it smaller as my webcam is already set smaller, but okay, like this. I will then make it smaller and I will simply drag and drop the color source behind my webcam. So my webcam capture is right there. You can, of course, rename it how you want. So right click, you can click on rename and then, for example, web, web, I can write webcam, and then I want to, this name is already used. Okay, whatever. So basically then I want to move these white color source behind my webcam. So like this, simply drag and drop, just like that. And now, as you can see, if I will drag it over my webcam, it will be actually behind this. So now I want to just change size like this to make it as in a slight white border. And I will once again crop it. I, I can actually move it to the right by drag and drop, or I can actually use my arrows as well. As you can see, it will make more slightly and uh, like slow moves, but I can once again crop it as before. So hold out and crop it, hold out and crop it. And now we got white border behind our webcam, even though it's more like gray, but it is what it is. In case you have any video that you would like to play on your stream as an intro video or outro video or anything else, you can already use this browser feature to actually play any of the video from the YouTube thread, or you can actually click on plus and then add media source. Thanks this, you can choose any of the video in your PC and you can actually play them on your scene or on the separate scene or anywhere else you want. Now let's say that I want to create new scene that will be almost exactly same as this one, but a little bit different. I can or right click on the scene and click on duplicate like this. And now we got actually two exactly same scenes or you can create new scene like this and then you will simply click on add and you will add scene. Now you will choose here scene one like this. And we got basically the, all of the scene one sources in this one scene. So in case you don't want to actually play with too many sources at once, you can use it exactly like this. In case of course you want this scene to have same settings and same like ratios as the scene one. And then of course, if you would like, you can go to settings and to hotkeys and then there you can basically set any kind of hotkeys for sense switching, turning on mic, turning off webcam, turning on some kind of element on your scene or anything else, okay? So basically you can turn that on, turn that off or toggle any of those scenes, sources or anything else what you got in your basically OBS set. So as you can see here, we got scene, which is basically our first scene. So let's say that I want to press F in case I want to go to this scene. And in case I want to go to webcam only, we are going, for example, for G. Now let's click on apply and okay. Now, as you can see, we can easily switch between those two scenes without even clicking, okay? Just by tapping G and F. Of course, don't use those keys for changing of your scenes or sources, because of course, when you will write a lot, you don't want just randomly switching your scenes. So of course, don't use those bins. It's just for the purpose of the video. So you understand that it's easy as that to hotkey, the scene switch, sources to turn on, turn off, whatever you want. You can mute mic, you can mute desktop, you can turn off the webcam, the overlays. Also, when I'm talking about the turning off the webcam, let's say that you want to actually group the webcam and the overlay behind it. So in case you will turn it off, it will turn off the both at the same time. So in my case, I want to click on the video capture device, hold control and click on color source. And now I will right click and click on group selected items like this. And as you can see, it's now in the one group. I can call it webcam group 
for example, of course, once again, I switch the scene because I'm genius. So I call it webcam G, whatever, and it's in one folder. So now when I will click on this eye, what is basically whether the source is visible or not on the stream. So if I will click on this eye, it will hide my webcam and the overlay at the same time from the scene. If I will click on this once again, it will show it on the stream or video or anywhere else once again, okay? So basically, thanks to this, you can hide or show various parts of your sources. Okay, I believe that's all for the scenes and sources. Nextly, we got your scene transitions. In my case, and for all of the beginners, I think the fade is good enough. In case you are more advanced, we can later talk about the transitions as well and more complicated ones. But for purpose of this video, the, the basic fade transition is Okay, nextly we got here audio mixer where you can actually change the volume of the output. So in case your desktop audio is too loud and you want to actually make your like microphone sound stronger and louder, you can decrease the volume of the desktop and also you can go to these three dots and you will go to filters of the mic and you can boost it here actually. So you can click on plus, gain and then for example you will click on OK and you will choose how many decibels you want to gain. Two, five depends on you but of course test it before you will show it or stream for your audience because you don't want to over boost it too much okay so basically here you can decrease or increase the volume that is coming towards the OBS of your mic of your desktop of your video of your webcam or anything else so in case your webcam have microphone and your microphone has microphone it doesn't make sense but okay so let's say you got two microphone inputs you don't want to put them both towards the OBS because that would be actually two audios of you just fighting each other so in this case for example my video capture device my webcam my microphone I don't want to use so I can mute it and therefore I will simply use my microphone audio and my desktop audio which will be decreased based on what I'm using of course for example when you are watching some video with your audience and they can't hear properly the video you can simply boost the desktop audio once again okay so just play with this how it's fit best for you okay and lastly we got the controls here you can turn on the stream which you can turn on by clicking on this or once again set it up as a hotkey then you can of course start recording here or start replay buffer what is basically that in case anything happened for example in your game you had some insane clutch so while your replay buffer is running you can simply click on this and it will actually capture the x amount of the video that you just wanted so you can download for example the last 60 seconds of the gameplay that you just played so let's say you will set it up for the 60 seconds in this case as soon as you will click on this while your replay buffer is running you can actually save the last 60 seconds of your gameplay. So in case you had any great clutch or anything like this, you can easily do this in this way that it will capture the last 60 seconds of your gameplay for you. Then you got here start visual camera, nothing special for the beginners. And then you got here studio mode, what you can use, but also you don't have to. Here basically let's say that you want to make some changes between the scenes while you don't want to do it straight on the stream. So for example let's say that you want to move your webcam and for example hide this image but you want to do it at the same time and like this. So you will basically change the scene how you want while your stream or video are still seeing the original scene, the one at the right and then you will click on transition and as you can see the and then the program scene will actually change to fit the previous scene okay so here you can play with this you can actually like launch some new window or anything else okay you can use it as you would imagine so you will just change it at the left that's your preview then transition and it will change on the stream as well okay so the studio mode you can simply then turn it off once again and then we got here settings here you can choose the general settings, stream settings, whether you are streaming for Twitch, YouTube, Kick, whatever else, output of the streaming, recording or audio, audio settings, video settings, hotkeys, accessibility, advanced settings, but this is all the topic for separate video. So in case you want to know what are the best recording settings for the OBS, what are the best streaming settings for the OBS, simply check out one of our latest videos in our OBS playlist. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's all for this video. Really hope you found it what you were looking for. Hope you are good and video fine. Thanks for watching and all of the support and see you all next time.